Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're having an amazing day so far. Today I wanted to talk about something that I've been getting a lot of messages about. I have a very, very, very long list of frequently asked questions, but these days I just don't have the time to sit down and answer all of those in one video. Plus I feel like it's easier for people to find what they need when I separate all the questions into different videos. So that's the plan. Today I'm gonna to be talking about what my experience was like once I realized I wanted to go on tea. A lot of people have been messaging me asking me, oh, did I need a therapist? Did I need a specific doctor? How did that work? I have made a video about this in the past, but I feel like it's kind of gotten lost in the rest of my videos and my channel. So I thought I would make a new one. Just a little disclaimer. My experience seems to be pretty different than most people's. And it was a lot easier for me to get on testosterone and kind of start that whole process than it has been for many people. And I feel like I've gotten really lucky. Unfortunately, I think my experience is pretty rare, which is really, really sad and, and really hurts my heart because obviously this shouldn't be a very difficult process. However, it's just like healthcare these days and insurance and finding a doctor that is accepting and educated and understanding and just the bare minimum of not being transphobic or homophobic, like it's really, really hard. So I hope that all of you are able to um, just find a safe way and a comfortable way to get your hormones because it can be really, really difficult. If you do need help finding more resources on that, please feel free to reach out to me. I can definitely help you um, because it's so different depending on where you live. But anyways, um, 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 I'm going to try to make this in one take because I feel like I don't have the time to edit this. Plus, this is just the real me. It's pretty early though. <laughs> I've only been awake for a little bit. So bear with me. I might ramble a little bit, but I'm just trying to get that information out there. Uh, when I first realized I wanted to go on tea, I had been seeing my therapist for about two years at that point. And so she really knew all about me, my whole life, my journey, how I was feeling about my gender, even though I didn't really have a label at the time. I think I might've called myself gender queer. I just didn't really know. I wasn't too educated and I wasn't too sure about my own gender. I just hadn't really explored it much. I think I was really worried, a little bit in denial, feeling a lot of gender dysphoria, but I didn't know that it was gender dysphoria because it was just coming out in different ways. But I had found my therapist two years prior and started therapy. Um, I was dealing with a lot of different things and just being in therapy in general really, really helped me to begin this journey and help me realize and explore this idea that, hey, I think that going on tea would really help me and overall just make me feel a lot better and help me just live a better life. And so I was talking to my therapist a lot about this and she's worked with a lot of people who are trans, non-binary, gender non-conforming, all over the gender spectrum. And so she knew of a doctor who has worked with a lot of her clients and her clients have had really good experiences with. And so this doctor actually happens to be the head of the transgender health department in this much bigger hospital that is right by where I live. And so I got really lucky with that because my therapist didn't have to directly refer me to this doctor. I think that there are some doctors who do require some sort of written thing, whether it's from a therapist who has kind of diagnosed you with gender dysphoria. I put that in quotes because I'm not totally sure how this all works, but um, I do know that my therapist didn't have to actually pick up the phone and be like, hey, my client Meg wants to see you because they've been seeing me for two years and like this is how they're feeling about their gender and they might want to go on tea, all that stuff. Like there was no communication between my therapist and this new doctor. The kind of hiccup that I had to deal with, the hump that I had to go over, was that I had been seeing the same family doctor my whole life. So there was this couple that had this family practice and they were legitimate doctors, but they were really, really, really old school and had not taken the time to educate themselves at all or like update what medicine was looking like these days. It was like, they could keep me alive, right? They could keep me going, they could help me with my um, vaccinations and you know my physicals and all that stuff but I was really uncomfortable going there and it was tough because they had known me from the time that I was born until I was like 20 21 and 
I don't know. It was just like, I, I never felt comfortable with them. And that's a shame considering the fact that they had known me for so long and I had been going to this, you know, these doctors for so long, but it's just kind of how it is. Like I felt uncomfortable. They seemed to be really uneducated about anything. Like as I grew up and as I learned more about my identity, I realized how separated we were and how like almost untouchable this kind of topic of gender and sexuality was when it came to going to the doctor. And for a long time, I didn't realize that going to the doctor shouldn't be a stressful thing. Like it was such a stressful thing because I was so worried about like getting misgendered or getting these weird questions or feeling like I had to advocate for myself and educate my doctors. Like that just doesn't feel right. And that shouldn't be how it is for anybody. Um, whether you're dealing with your gender or sexuality or just anything, going to your doctor should not be stressful like that. You know what I mean? Um, so that was kind of the hump I had to go over because they had this, you know, very long, long, long list of all of my medical records and all this information from the time that I was born until I was like 2021. 20, and so I had to get all this information over. And so I had to pick up the phone and call my doctor and tell them that I needed a direct line, a direct, um, what's the word? Like my family doctor had to refer me to this new doctor basically. Um, and so I had to pick up the phone and I had to talk to him and you know, he kind of asked me why I was, you know, switching and I told him that I wanted to go on testosterone and this doctor is the head of the transgender health department. Like she knows what she's doing. And I just, you know, I didn't tell him that I felt uncomfortable because I felt too uncomfortable to share that with him. Um, but the first thing he told me was, oh, you know, if you go on testosterone, you're going to go bald. And from that moment on, <laughs> I was like, you know what? I just need my medical records to be transferred over and I need your, basically your okay, your doctor okay. Like obviously he can't tell me what I can and cannot do, but like I just need your, <laughs> your signature, your, um, um, the privilege that you have as my doctor to get this information and pass it on because I don't have direct access to do that. Anyways, so I had to do that, but it was really hard. And I remember hanging up the phone and feeling really sad and super invalidated, but really happy that I was able to get my message out there and get my medical records transferred over. And so then I was able to go to this new doctor who I've now been with for almost two years. And, you know, it was really super easy. I got to go there and get to know her and she really didn't have to question me much. It was more like, hey, I know what I'm doing. I understand you're dealing with gender dysphoria. I already know what that means. I already know the different kind of amounts of testosterone you can take, what that can do to you. I'm going to share with you my experience, my knowledge, and you could just sit there and tell me how you're feeling if you have any questions. And it's not about me trying to educate her or advocate for myself. And she was the one that introduced me to this idea of being on a low dose of tea. I kind of thought it was like one way or the other, but she introduced me to this idea of, of being on different amounts of testosterone and opened that up for me. So that's really awesome and that really helped me. So that's kind of what my experience looked like once I kind of realized and accepted that I wanted to go on T. I just kind of got lucky with already seeing a therapist and I recommend to anybody, whether you're cis or trans or anywhere on the gender spectrum, um, any sexuality, any anybody, I recommend going to therapy. I know it's really, really difficult um, depending on your financial situation, but there are a lot of resources and a lot of um, good resources that can connect you with good therapy or just good therapy-like resources, good support groups, whatever you can get really to just um, find a community and a safe space, whether it's with multiple people on Facebook or just one therapist, whatever it is, like it's so helpful. Um, if you have more questions about that or if you need help finding a therapist or just kind of um, need someone to bounce ideas off when it comes to therapy or starting that whole process, please feel free to let me know. Reach out to me. Um, I'm totally willing to help you because like I said in the beginning, it's so difficult with healthcare and everything, just depending on where you live and um, 
the resources that you have, but I'm, you know, obviously there to help you out with that because you are not alone and you are so valid. Even if doctors tell you that you're not, or if you shouldn't do this or that you're going to go bald, like this is your life and you're the only person who's ever going to live your life. You're, you're the only person who's going to walk in your shoes and experience this life. Um, and that's just super important to remember. So it's pretty much all I have to say. I hope that all of you are doing well. Um, please feel free to let me know if you have any other video ideas or requests. Uh, say hi to me on social media. All my info is in the description below. I still have a lot of art up on my Etsy where I have some things going to a lot of black led, black LGBTQIA plus groups and organizations. If you would like to donate, if you have the means to, you can get some art sent to you, plus a little note from me, plus some extras, and you're also donating all at the same time and helping me educate people and advocate for black lives and black trans lives and just helping us uh, amplify their voices because that's what's really needed right now. So please don't forget to take care of yourself. It's a crazy time. I'm here for you. You are not alone and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.